fire extinguisher's gone off. The fire extinguisher's gone off for Mick Schumacher. Well, that video of uh, Mick Schumacher in his Formula 2 days, yep. I think, gives us a perfect example of something that we don't necessarily always see. And nope. the, a lot of people don't even realize is there, Albert, and that is a fire extinguisher that exists not just in the F2 car, but also, of course, in, in every Formula One car. And it's such an essential part of the car. Indeed, uh, and only they have to use it normally when there is a fire on the yeah. car, not when there is a mistake or something yes, like that. Yes, when it goes off by and, accident. And obviously what we cannot do is to bring a fire extinguisher like this in the car because it's heavy and it, it has a lot of volume so we don't want uh, to carry it on the car. And the main target of this is to extinguish a fire if there is some fire on the car. That is obviously dangerous for the driver, the first thing, but then the teams doesn't want to make the car uh, be like a big fire and destroy yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah. Um, parts of the car. So what do we need for a fire to exist? There's three elements. Is it called the triangle of fire? So there's three elements that we need to uh, have a fire. The first one, the fuel. It can be gasoline, it can be fuel, it can be wood, it can be oil in a car, it can be hydraulic liquid, it can be plastic, anything that can be like a fuel is one of the parts of this triangle. Uh, there's another one that is everywhere. Oxygen. Oxygen. In the air, there is a lot of oxygen in the air, so let's put that second element that we need for a fire in our sort of triangle and then we need heat that it can be like the engine the exhaust the brakes a spark it can act heat to have the fire then we have a, a reaction a chain reaction that increases that effect but basically it's these three elements that we need yes or yes to have a fire it's like being back in science class yeah so the same way that we need these three elements to have a fire to extinguish it we need to take off one it doesn't just, matter just one element take just it away element. fire goes away yeah you see we take the oxygen out and the fire has gone as extinguished so this is the main target of the fire extinguisher that we have on the car okay to extinguish. but before that to understand what's the triangle let's do you want to do a home uh, Homemade extinguisher? They're letting me loose around a naked <laughs> flame. I haven't shaved today <laughs> yeah, for maybe. deliberate reasons so that I wouldn't wear aftershave. Yeah. I haven't put any hairspray in today, so uh, we should be safe. Elements. Vinegar. Italian one, huh? good one. A uh, good one. Okay. A good one. Uh, so it's not. A, and uh, you call soda bicarbonate? Bicarbonate of soda. Yeah, okay. So let's open that. Let's put a little bit. I'm, I'm usually very calm when you're doing your experiments. Today, yeah, not yeah, so much. Don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> we need to light up these candles. We light up the candles just to show you an example. Okay, so we mix the vinegar with the bicarbonate and uh, I need a little bit of... And what's this going, what's this going to create? Is we're going to create CO2. Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide and the carbon dioxide is uh, replacing the oxygen here. Okay. Whenever. So 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 the rea the chain reaction between the bicarbonate of soda and the vinegar will create carbon yeah. dioxide. Yes. And the emission of the carbon dioxide will take one of those three pillars. The oxygen away. away. Oh, okay. So, you see? Yep. We have a reaction, and now the carbon dioxide is going out from the from the jar. From the bubbles. Yeah. And it would just get closer to here. Oh, it's gone. Yeah, it's gone. Just get the carbon dioxide close to yes. it, and it goes. Because the, but the dioxide, it replaces the oxygen here, and go the fire gone. So this is a little bit uh, what we need to do on the car if there is a fire. But the car isn't filled with vinegar and bicarbonate of soda. No, unlikely, no. Well, maybe the Ferrari because of the Italian. Yeah, because of the Italian <laughs> vinegar, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, they have an extinguishing system that is more or less, uh, I'll show you here. You, you come and I will show you how it works because it's very simple. The main thing is the tank. You see, it's a carbon fiber tank that it has like a, a belly, stomach okay. inside. You see, it's flexible. And it's filled with extinguishing material. At the old times, it was powder. Then it becomes like a liquid. Now it's a more complex uh, chemicals um, extinguishing material. Uh, 
but uh, the, at the end of the day, what we need something is that it covers the fire and it goes away with the oxygen okay. or it can just heat down the temperature of the fire. So the theory remains the same, whether it yeah. was powder or liquid, now that this, this chemical formula that goes in there, it's to take away the oxygen. Exactly. And the good thing of these new products is there's no corrosive, is uh, not leaving anything over the electrical loops. Residue, anything yeah. like that. So it's more clean for the teams and it doesn't damage any single part. So we do have a tank that it goes inside easy with a bulb and a pipe. So it picks up whatever is the extinguishing, extinguishing system that or the material we have inside. And then we have different systems to activate it. Okay. Obviously, we cannot rely on the electrical system of the car because if there is a fire, everything is disconnected for the safety. So we need to have a place with a battery, an electronic box that can activate the whole system. Okay, so that's battery operated, so completely yes. independent from the car's electrical system. Exactly. So you arm it, you just test it with the battery. There is a battery inside, a little battery, and whenever it's armed, so we know that if there is a signal from the switches, it goes into the, into the system. How we activate? How, who is pushing the button to say you need, we need to extinguish it? There's two ways. The driver or someone from outside, the marshal, a mechanic, or whoever it is. From the outside, we can see on the rule hoop, there is these little red things with an E, mm -hmm. a big E next to the car. So if you pull from that, there is a switch inside that disconnect the electrical system and switch on the fire extinguisher. Got it. So that's what the marshals will do from outside the car. Exactly. And the other one is the driver inside the car. If he feels that something is too hot and there is flames or there is a fire, he can activate the system. So uh, whenever we have all the system connected and the signal, he send it to a place where there is a canister. A canister that it has pressure inside because this is not pressured. Okay. This tank is not pressured. So we need to put pressure to push the extinguishing material outside of the, the tank. Okay. This and there's it. two... Exactly. Two outlets. And the material goes outside the extinguishing, it goes inside the cockpit and on the engine bay. So we need to protect the, the driver, first of all, but then we need to try to extinguish the, the fire because it normally comes from the engine side. So. Uh, you want to try if it works? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, so what we need to do is to fill it. I brought some powder. We don't have that uh, special chemical things. We need some powder. You, you probably know just this as, powder just now. As an I, I, baby powder. <laughs> so obviously it's not powder anymore. It's the, it's the chemicals in there. How yep. much is in the tank? And, and is there a, a split like is it 50 50 split between engine bay uh, and, and cockpit it's or about 60 and 40 60 okay. in the cockpit and the cockpit normally they put this kind of uh, nozzles okay that are different than the engine base that are a little bit more splashing the whole thing wider uh, dispersion yeah and the quantity depending on the material okay uh, but normally it's between 1.5 kilo 1.7 this one is uh, was 1.7 but depending on on the distinguishing material. I think that's gonna be okay. You wanna try? Go on. Okay. I need to fix this because it is. Oh. And now what we're gonna do is to put that pressure into the system. So it should work. Okay. Now the system is pressured, and now we should wait for the signal. Obviously, this is a little bit like a fake. Okay. But we should wait for the signal coming from the driver or from the marshal outside. And then we will empty all this pressure inside the, inside the tank. And this pressure will take the powder and will spray it all around through the lines and through the nozzles into the engine bay and into the cockpit where the driver is to protect okay. them. Okay, we are ready. How do I do it? I just squeeze it? No, no. <laughs> you just need to press it like this. It's already in. So there is a fire and now I will press the button. One, two, three. Go! So, yeah. It, it smells beautiful. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, the, the rules say that these systems are homologated by FIA and says that the pressure must release constantly between 10 and 30 seconds. It must be a constant pressure and a minimum of 10 seconds and maximum of 30. To be homologated by FIA, they put the stamp and the fire should be <laughs> <laughs> but now. Perfect. Something like that. Brilliant, mate.
Okay. As always, fascinating. You need to get yourself cleaned up. Yes. Well, let's go. Uh, okay. Get a shower. Yeah. <laughs>